Hey guys, it's Paul here with Gear Test TV, and if you've been into backpacking for really any length of time, you know that the two things that add up the most quickly when it comes to backpacking are weight and cost. Well, today I'm gonna to be showing you a backpacking setup that keeps both of those things to a minimum. So there seems to be this idea out there that in order to have an ultralight backpacking setup, you have to spend some astronomical amount of money. And it is true that a lot of ultralight gear is very expensive, but nowadays there are also a lot of good options out there that are not that bad. So I set out on a project a couple of months ago to come up with a backpacking setup that would have a nine pound or less base weight for between six and seven hundred dollars. And this is the backpacking setup that I came up with. It took a lot of research, but I was able to find a lot of good options. So I have the whole setup assembled here in the pack, and I'll try to give you the cost of each item and the weight of each item as I walk through the pack. But before I start tearing into it, I thought I would weigh the entire setup and just show you what my base weight came out to be. So the total weight there comes out to be 9.06 pounds, and that's actually with the four ounce fuel canister inside here, which typically would not be included in the base weight. So uh, really coming out to just under nine pounds for the entire setup. So I'll start by talking about the bag itself. Uh, I ended up deciding on the Teton Sports Cirque 1600, but I will say the backpack was probably the hardest item to nail down out of this entire setup. Um, I did try the REI Flash 22 because it's uh, I think $55 and it weighs only 13 ounces, but it was just barely too small. I did find a lot of cheap, fairly lightweight packs on Amazon from some of these no-name companies, but I just didn't know that I would trust them to be rugged enough to hold up backpacking. Um, but Teton Sports, as you may see over here, this red pack, it was my first backpack. It's a Teton Sports Hiker 3700. And that bag held up really well. I put a lot of miles on it and it's still in decent shape today. So I at least trusted and had confidence in Teton Sports. So I ended up going with the Cirque 1600. It's a 26 liter pack and you can find it for about $50 on Amazon. They have it listed on Amazon as 1.8 pounds, but whenever I got it here and I weighed it myself, um, I was coming up with 2.3 pounds. So I think it was a little bit heavier than what I wanted in a pack for this setup, but my total weight still came out to be uh, within my goal range, so it worked out. So far I have about 50 miles worth of hiking with this pack and it's held up really well, even slinging it around and tossing it on the ground. It's held up well. The bottom of this is white, so you can see it gets dirty pretty easily, but uh, as far as the seams and things like that, it's held up really well. So with all of that said, I will start on this side. Uh, for water, I am just carrying some life water bottles. You could also carry smart water bottles. Uh, they're just really lightweight. And the main thing about these is that uh, the reason you'll see people carrying life water or smart water is because the threads are a standard size thread that will work on the Sawyer filters. So that is what I'm carrying as my water filter. I have the Sawyer Mini here. These, when they first came out, I've had this one for probably five or six years now. And when they first came out, you could only find them on Amazon. And now you can pick these up at Walmart. They're all over the place because they only weigh about two ounces and they're only 20 bucks. So I was able to keep my water bottles in this side pocket and uh, the water filter in this little uh, zip up pocket to keep them both accessible without digging into the bag. So if I needed to just stop really quickly and filter water, uh, is right there, easily accessible from the outside. I'll spin this around here and show you my tent. Um, I just personally sleep a lot better in a tent than I do in a hammock. So I wanted to go with a tent. I ended up going with the Six Moon Designs Skyscape Trekker. Now this is a trekking pole tent. So it uses your trekking poles as the tent poles. You can get optional carbon fiber, or I think they even have aluminum poles if you don't want to use your trekking poles or don't hike with trekking poles that is an option, but the tent itself comes in uh, at 28 ounces, so under two pounds for the tent, and it's $225 if you will seam seal it yourself. It is an extra 30 if you want them to seam seal it for you, but still just a really lightweight tent for the price. I can keep it on the outside of my bag where if it's raining when I get to camp and it needs to be the first thing that I set up, it's easily accessible there, or same thing if it's raining in the morning and I need it to be the last thing I pack up, it's easy to just stick on the outside of my bag where I'm not putting a wet tent 
content on the inside of my bag with the rest of my gear. So with that, on this other zippered pocket, I have the, uh, first of all, the footprint. These little footprints, they're $9 for a pack of two and they only weigh 1.2 ounces uh, each. So these are super lightweight. And then they also have the Six Moon Designs uh, tent stakes that you can buy separately. They are $13 for the stake set and they only come in at 2.3 ounces. So I will set the tent to the side and move on to the uh, top zippered pocket of the hood of this bag. And one thing that I will point out is that the $650 total cost uh, is for, I would say, 95% of what I have in this setup. Uh, there are a few things like toilet paper, for example, that I'm going to hope you already have on hand. And then the little bag that I carry it in, it's a nylon water. It's not waterproof. I know that from experience. It is a water resistant bag and they come in a set of three. I got these at Walmart for $10. I think you can get them for the same price on Amazon now, but it's only three ounces for all three bags. The next thing I have in here that I also did not include in the cost just because not everybody's gonna care enough about it to carry one of these. Uh, this is an UltraPod little tripod with a Velcro strap that I also have a phone adapter on. And when I'm backpacking, if I wanna take pictures or videos, this is what I use because it's a tripod so I can just set it down on the ground or I can use the Velcro strap to attach it to a trekking pole or a tree limb or whatever. It weighs in at 3.2 ounces total for this setup. So that was included in the base weight, not included in the total cost, but it's something that I like to carry with me. And the last thing that I have inside this top pocket here is my Snow Peak Titanium Spork. These things are $10 and they weigh only a half ounce. So I've been using this for I think the past five or six years. I've had it for quite a while and it has worked well. I carry it in this uh, top pocket because sometimes I like to carry peanut butter as a snack and when I stop to eat that, um, I don't have to dig out my entire cook kit to get to my spork. It's just easily accessible and it just fits a little bit better in the top pocket. That's everything that I have in this top pocket. The only other thing I would carry on an actual trip up here um, I might add some sunscreen or bug spray depending on the, the weather or time of year. And then uh, also I'll keep my snacks in this top pocket as well. So that's everything on the outside of the bag. I can unclip these two clips here and show you it has another pocket on the inside of the hood. The first thing I'll talk about is this essentials bag. I call it an essentials bag. It's not the 10 essentials of backpacking. Uh, but it's just, I have a Sharpie, um, I'll carry my toothbrush, toothpaste, floss, I have some ibuprofen, chapstick, Kleenex, a little bit of extra Gorilla Tape, just a few minor things. Um, once again, something that hopefully you already have or have around the house, and uh, this whole setup weighs a couple of ounces. So I keep that easily accessible in this top pocket here. The next thing that I have is an emergency poncho. Now this thing is only a dollar and it weighs only 1.2 ounces. Now I will say if I know for a fact that rain is predicted on a trip, then I'll probably carry something like an actual rain jacket, but I carry this at all times just because sometimes, especially in the mountains, uh, the weather forecast is not always accurate. So I always carry at least this as a backup option. And the reason I like carrying a poncho instead of a, a rain jacket is that I do not like to carry the rain cover. This bag does come with a rain cover. I don't carry it just because it's additional weight. Um, but with the poncho, I can put it on over me and over the pack if it does start raining at random. The next thing that I have is something that I just bought for this setup. This is my headlamp. It's the Nightcore NU20. I've used this on the last couple of trips and I absolutely love this headlamp. Um, it, is $30, so it's not the most expensive headlamp out there, but there are cheaper ones. I wanted a good quality headlamp, and this thing weighs only 1.7 ounces, and it's rechargeable, so that's with the battery. 1.7 ounces, you could probably drop even a little bit of weight if you replaced the uh, the headband, if you're really what uh, Syntax 77 calls a gram weenie, you can swap that out to drop a little more weight, but even as it sits, it's 1.7 ounces. Um, it's also IPX7 waterproof, which 
It's amazing to me how many headlamps are not waterproof. One of the things that I love about this headlamp, if you notice, is that it has a little tab, a little plastic tab on the top. So when the headlamp is folded up, it blocks the button, the power button, from being pressed while it's inside your pack. My old Coast headlamp that I used to use, I can't tell you how many times I would pull it out of my pack all to see that the light had been on for the last six hours and the batteries were almost dead. In addition to all of that, this thing has a maximum output of 360 lumens, which is way brighter than what you need most of the time, but it does have the power there if you need it. Uh, when you first press the button, it comes on at one lumen, Press it again right after that, it goes to 40 lumens, and then after that, it goes up to 220 lumens. Now, I won't go through a full review of this thing. There is a way that you can turn it on and go into turbo mode, which is the 360 lumens. But I love that when it first comes on, it's just one lumen. So if you have this in your tent at night and you wake up and you just need to look for your water bottle or whatever it may be, you can turn it on, it automatically comes on at one lumen and you're not blinding yourself. So it's a great little headlamp and really quickly I'll just go through at one lumen it will run for 100 hours, at 40 lumens it will run for 8 hours, 220 lumens it runs for 6 hours, and then like I said USB rechargeable if you need to recharge it after that. So an excellent little headlamp, I really enjoyed using this. I would recommend it. So the last thing that I keep up here in this top pocket, which you'll notice this pocket has a little uh, clip on the inside. So I will clip my keys there whenever I get to the trailhead just to make sure they don't accidentally fall out of my bag somewhere along the trail. But I also keep clipped to that this little Gerber dime. This has a little knife on it and oftentimes this is the only knife that I will carry with me. Sometimes I'll carry a larger pocket knife, but I can't tell you how many trips I've been on where I didn't use a knife the entire time, so usually this is enough for me. And this little thing weighs 2.2 ounces and it's only $16. But the thing that I like about it is that this also has a small pair of pliers. These can also be used as tweezers. In addition to that, it has a small pair of scissors here. And I will say one of the reasons I like carrying this is because I would say that I have used the scissors and the pliers on backpacking trips probably twice as often as I use a blade. Moving on to the inside of the bag, you can see there is a drawstring here, so I will just open that up. This is where I keep my medical kit. This used to be an Adventure Medical 0.5, so much has been changed out in this kit in the years that I've had it that I wouldn't really call it an Adventure Medical kit anymore. I'm gonna hope that you, if you're backpacking, already have a medical kit. If you don't, this is a good one. I think they're only like nine or 10 bucks and they weigh very little. I'm not gonna bother going through everything in this pack, but that's a good one to look at if you need a lightweight setup. Um, since I'm not carrying a hydration bladder, the, it, the bag does have a sleeve for a hydration bladder, but instead what I carry in here is this little foam sitting pad. You can get a whole long roll of this stuff for I think it's nine or ten dollars at Walmart and this little pad I've used for a very long time and I just cut a little section off to just be big enough to sit on or kneel on and it's nice it's just a little extra padding when I'm sitting on the ground or on the log it's um, a closed cell foam so it is waterproof if the ground is wet and then uh, sometimes at night I'll just slide this up under the tent under where my head goes just to add even a little extra padding there. So uh, this, as I have it cut down like this, weighs only like an ounce. It's super lightweight, but uh, it's a pretty useful little thing to have at camp. Next are these two bags. These are the other two bags that I was talking about that come in the set that I had my toilet paper in. So they are three different sizes. This is my clothing bag, the red one. Uh, if it's getting colder, then I'll carry also like a quarter zip or something like that inside of this bag. But for most of my trips, the last couple months, the only thing extra that I'm taking is an extra pair of smart wool socks and ex officio underwear. So that's usually all that I'm going to carry and I'm just going to rewear what I wore the first day on my trips. Um, but that's what I carry in that bag. And then in this bag, this is the largest of the set. This would be my food bag, 
but since this is just a video about base weight, I don't actually have any food in here. The only thing that I have that I will always carry and you hopefully carry on every trip is a gallon Ziploc bag. This is my trash bag. So whenever I have any trash at all, then I just put it in this bag. It's easy to zip back closed and then it keeps everything contained inside this bag. And when I get back home, I can just toss it in the trash. But I keep that inside the food bag so that whenever I hang up my food at night, the trash is also in my food bag. The next thing that I have in here is uh, some paracord that I carry. This is my bear cord or my, my food hanging cord. So I just keep a little um, carabiner clipped onto the end of it. It's paracord, not much else to say about it. So the next thing inside my bag is my cook set. And I just like to keep a little elastic band around it and what I have in here is the Tokes Titanium 750 milliliter uh, cooking pot. Now it comes with this little mesh orange bag, but I like to keep my cook set inside of a bandana. And the reason that I do that is just because when I'm cooking, I like to have a place to uh, set down my spork or say the lid or whatever it may be. It's just nice to have a little space where I can set things down without them touching the ground. So I like to carry it in a bandana and then I can also use this to, uh, if I need to, I can wipe out the cook set with it and then it's easy enough to just toss in the, the washer and wash it whenever I get home. Like I said, this is the Tokes Titanium 750 milliliter pot. It weighs only 3.6 ounces for the pot and the lid and it comes in at $35 for the set. So inside here, I have my stove. This is a little no name, no brand stove that I got on Amazon about eight years ago. It only costs $7 and it weighs 3.8 ounces. And this is the piece of gear that really I thought would just be like a temporary thing until I could upgrade to something name brand or something a little larger. But like I said, I've been using this for the past eight years and it, it's like it won't die. It just keeps working and it works really well and it costs almost nothing. It weighs almost nothing. So I continue to carry it and it fits well inside of this uh, titanium pot. So I would recommend going with one of these. It has definitely performed well for me. The next thing that I have in here, I do carry a small Bic lighter just as a, a backup fire source. I carry it inside of one of these tiny bags just to keep it waterproof. Um, these little bags I use a lot in my backpacking stuff just for kind of measuring out um, say medicine or whatever little thing you might need to carry with you. These little bags you can get them in a pack of like 50 for a dollar at Walmart. So they're great little bags to have on hand. I keep this little mini Bic lighter inside of here. And then the last thing that I have is this uh, little four ounce jet boil can, which the stove just screws right to the top of this. And as I said, this is the fuel. So typically this would not be counted in the base weight, uh, but I keep it in my cook kit because it fits well down inside my pot. So uh, I have this in there as well. So the next thing that I have inside the bag is my sleeping pad. This is another one that I bought specifically for the setup. And for a long time, I've been using the Climate Static V, which um, is a great pad. I've used it for several years now and it's worked well. Uh, it does weigh a little bit more and cost a little more than what I wanted for this setup. So I went on the hunt and found this. The, the, the brand is G for free, which is just another one of these like dime a dozen brands on Amazon. But what drew me to this pad specifically is that it was only $24 and it weighs only 15 ounces. I couldn't really get a clear weight on their Amazon listing. So that's 15 ounces is what I weighed it at. And the thing that I really like about it is that um, it has a built-in pillow on one end. One of the issues I've had for a long time is my pillow moving around at night. So having a built-in pillow like this, it doesn't go anywhere. So I sleep a lot better on this than I did on my Climate Static V. And then another benefit to it is that it does still have a separate air valve for the rest of the pad versus the pillow. So if you need to change the height or stiffness of the pillow 
versus the rest of the pad, you can do those independently. So far, I have only, I think, three or four nights on this pad. If I end up, you know, finding that, oh, this only lasted me five or six nights, then I'll update the description below. But so far, I'm really impressed with it, and I'm hoping that it lasts me for quite a while. So last, but certainly not least, inside this backpack is my top quilt. Like a lot of backpackers nowadays uh, are switching to top quilts, I chose to go with a top quilt instead of a sleeping bag because it is a little bit lighter. This is the Outdoor Vitals Stormloft Down 30 degree top quilt. It's the long version. They have a couple of different lengths, but the long version comes in at 20 ounces and it's $200. I will be doing a full review on this quilt once I have a chance later on to really test it out. I will also be doing a full review on the Skyscape Trekker, so be looking out for those. If you're watching this later on and those reviews are already posted, I'll have the links in the description below. So that is everything that is in this setup for a sub nine pound base weight coming in at about $650. Now, one last thing that I wanna say is that I am not one of those people that would tell you that the goal of backpacking is to drop your pack weight as much as possible. I think there are some out there that enjoy that challenge, and for some it's kind of like a hobby in itself of just trying to drop as much pack weight as possible. But I would say that the goal of backpacking is just to get out and enjoy the outdoors. But if you're like me and you have done trips in the past with 30, 40, even 50 pounds on your back, you know that dropping some of that pack weight can make the experience a lot more enjoyable. So I hope that this video has shown you that you can drop quite a bit of pack weight without spending thousands and thousands of dollars. If you have found this information helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content just like this coming to you soon. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.